Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, today, I'd like to, uh, to, to share my experience in uh, making some features for FreeCAD, more specifically uh, features for the sketcher and the part design uh, part of the uh, workbenches. So I want to share that experience because um, initially I wanted to make some features that I thought were, were missing in, uh, in FreeCAD, for me at least. and. Um, and uh, I didn't know how to start and uh, the source code is quite overwhelming so it was uh, quite difficult to get started and so uh, the idea is that yeah I will just explain you a little bit the code structure how to um, how to <coughs> install um, the environment and so on so if First, you can, uh, well, I think the first step would be to first go to the FreeCAD forum, uh, create an account, and there you see you have a developer development uh, part of the forum, so you can go either in your, in the, um, in the workbench uh, that you want to, to develop, so if it's part design or sketches, sketcher, then you will go to this one, part design and um, part design and sketcher actually but it's not there or you can also post in a develop developer corner um, so the idea is that before you start to make a feature you you want to explain it and maybe make uh, small mm, drawings with uh, paint to explain to the people what you want to do because if you go ahead and uh, spend one week developing a feature and then you post it and people say no it won't be integrated into the master then it's it's a little bit sad for for the time you lost so the idea is that you first uh, share the uh, the id you see what people say and you see maybe you can adjust the feature to make it a little bit be better and uh, see if it will get integrated and if it makes sense so once you have started to um, by doing that um, well, I can show you an example because I posted quite a few, uh, a few of those. Uh, here's, uh, let me see, uh, feature ID. That's one of uh, of mine. So you see, uh, feature ID. Like um, the idea is that you can use Control C and Control V in, inside the sketcher uh, between different sketches and between different projects which is currently not possible you only have the copy tool and the copy tool doesn't go between sketches so yeah that's the idea so you see i just posted here describing the the thing and then uh, well here i didn't get many feedback but someone uh, gave me a hint uh, about how to to do it so that's uh, the main idea let me just check that it's still recording um, all right, so now that you have uh, your ID, you explain your ID, uh, uh, what you want to do is uh, start by installing the environment. So to be able to build uh, and compile um, um, FreeCAD. So in order to do this, you can type in Google uh, FreeCAD Developer Hub and you will find this uh, page, which is actually uh, explaining you in, uh, in great details all the, the things that you, that you need. Um, more, speci more specifically, you want to, f to start with uh, compiling uh, FreeCAD. So I'm using Windows here, so I follow the Compile on Windows uh, tutorial. Which was um, which was very nice in and clear. To I was quite surprised because usually it's always out of date and you always have things not working here. Uh, everything worked quite well. I didn't install uh, a front end because Git now has a integrated front end, so I thought that was enough. And um, yeah, so basically you need to follow all those steps. And once you do that, you should uh, ha you should be able to build um, you should be able to build um, FreeCAD. So once you've followed all those steps, you should have um, let me see here there are you should have those two folders: FreeCAD uh, source folder and FreeCAD build folder. So and a third one which is this one: FreeCAD lib. Uh, folder uh, which are necessary libraries 
uh, but it's all explained in the link that I showed you. So basically here, this is the source code of, uh, of FreeCAD. And so if you have done uh, the things correctly, then it will be connected to your GitHub, uh, to your GitHub fork. Uh, because what you want to do is start by uh, forking, um, forking the, um, here you click fork and it will create a fork on, on your account. Then on your account, you create um, a branch for the, the um, for the, um, well, it's not necessary, but it's a good idea to do that. You create a branch for the feature that you are, you have in mind. So you see here, I have several IDs and each one have a different uh, branches branches so it keeps things separated and you can make several things uh, at the same time um, yeah so basically uh, let's go back here you have a source folder here and you have a build folder here so those two folders uh, are quite different the build folder is where you find the um, the, the software that you build so it will be down to uh, letter f freecad.exe and uh, so this is the the free cap that you compiled so it will have uh, it will have well the features that you that you implemented and all the bugs that you need to solve so for instance uh, here let me show you uh, i'm currently working on a on a tool uh, for to add the tool settings widget here and the idea is that when you select a tool you see you have the different uh, features so you can type in the dimension you see here and then uh, maybe 50 100 and then it will create you see a, uh, a rectangle of the dimension that you want and auto constrain it so yeah so that's the good my development version of freecad and it's uh, so it's in the um, in the build uh, in the build directory um, Beside in this directory, you will also find this file, which is the the Visual Visual Studio um, project file. So if I double click that, it will open the development environment. So you can see here it will uh, it will launch with uh, all my uh, all my files, the files that I edited recently, and, um, and you have here. I can build it now. Uh, if it's the first time you're building the project, it will take very long. If it's not the first time, unless if you click rebuild, then it will rebuild the whole project. But if you just click build, it will be pretty fast. You see here, it, it, it took uh, it took not so much time, only uh, maybe one minute or so. And, and then once you have done that step, uh, if you have uh, installed the libraries, uh, as explained in the tutorial, uh, you will have the new uh, the new the new file uh, which is here freecad.exe the new program and you can check it out so that's it for the uh, like um environment part of the this video basically it's um, yeah i think it's pretty much all you need to know oh uh, yeah maybe some uh, um let me think um yeah, maybe some tips on how to use uh, Visual Studio in order to browse the code and uh, f find things that you want. Uh, it's when you try to analyze the, the structure of the code, what you can do is, uh, for instance, let's say that uh, you have this function and you don't understand what it does, what you can do, and which is very handy, you right click on it and you have here peak definition go def go to definition go to declaration so this basically will take you to the file where this function is declared so here let's go to go to definition and you see it opens the file uh, where it the function is uh, defined and then you can read the function to to try to understand what it does and uh, and uh, where it is and so on and so that's very very convenient when you approach these large projects where you don't know the architecture architecture of the 
of the source code and you want to try to understand to implement your feature it's yeah it's very convenient you also have this view call your your key and uh, find all references if you click find all references you see here in the log uh, window it will uh, create a new tab and you can find all the references of this uh, function and when you click it it will bring you to where it's actually uh, inside the source code so that's basically the the tools that you have that will let you navigate through the the source code of um, of this kind of uh, big project so now let's let's um, let me introduce you to the architecture of uh, of the freecad source code because yeah as i told you when i started i was like wow what what am i doing how how can i get started let me check i just yeah because a few time uh, OBS just stopped recording and <laughs> I lost uh, all my video. So yeah, so as I said, the idea is that to understand the um, once you know where to find things, it, it's actually m much faster. So basically, you have the so that's the the whole source folder. You have here a folder called source, in which you can open. And inside this uh, source folder, you have uh, so several things. But basically, mod, the mod uh, folder is where every workbench is installed. So you can see here you have one folder for each um, workbench. So let's take, uh, for instance, yeah, the Sketcher workbench, which is you know the one that I know. Uh, inside the uh, the workbench. Uh, folder you have uh, several um, subfolders but basically you have GUI which is um, standing for the user interface so it's all the graphical elements let's say and you have the app which is supposed to be like the more um, background uh, functions and uh, all the different uh, all the different uh, workbenches here part design for instance it's also quite similar you see you have gui app and and then you have more um, more things but basically it's it's the idea so let's go back to the sketcher uh, and uh, to gui for instance then you can see here in the gui uh, the first thing you can see is that in uh, if you want to make a new tool the, f the first uh, most basic thing is that uh, the tools have um, have um, icons. So the icons are in resources and icons. And you can see you have different uh, categories. In geometry, for instance, you have all the, um, the, um, the, the tool. Let's, let's, show let's just launch the sketcher to show you. Uh, yeah, you see all the icons and uh, each uh, like um, set of icons will be uh, uh, inside um, one folder. You see here geometry, for instance. So if you want to create a new uh, a new tool, you can start by making the um, the um, the icon for for it. Then the icon ha is to be declared inside uh, this sketcher dot qrc and. Uh, but basically the way you want to, to do it is like, okay, I want to make a tool that is like a, an arc slot. So a slot which is a, a round. What, how you do that is actually you, you want to start by um, following how the slot tool is created and like copy the, the things and make an... Uh, and uh, change the function such, such that it does the, your new tool. So you can start by copy pasting this uh, create slot tool. Then you can call it uh, copy. Uh, uh, you can call it uh, co uh, create arc slot dot svg, and then you can uh, create the. Um, you can edit the um, the icon with. Um, with Inkscape, for instance, so let's 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 do that. And um, you can well, there you create a new icon if you want. Here I won't spend the time doing that, but and then what you want to do is you want to to 
to follow um, you want to follow this for instance you, you, you so you copy paste this name and you can go uh, in uh, in your environment and you can uh, make a research for this term here create slot for instance and you can search the whole project for this reference and this will let you get um, like an idea of what you need to uh, where this feature is implemented what you need to do to um, to build your own feature so you see this is the file i told you about just before it's let me show uh, what's um yeah so that shouldn't be uh and edited but the idea is i know it's the build here you see it's the build uh, folder, so we can close that. We are not going inside the build folder there. And so you can see here you can find uh, this way you can find where this tool is implemented and uh, try to make your own by adapting the structure and following everything you see here by researching. I can see that the the um, SVG file has to be uh, has to be declared inside the inside this uh, sketcher.qrc file so you can just go ahead and do the same and here into the workbench.cpp what is that uh, yeah you see well you can uh, you can um, add your icon uh, and then you can see that here into workbench.cpp you also have to declare this uh, this uh, uh, tool and it has to be uh, like this name and you can use that um, research tool to understand where the um, where your fun uh, the tool that you want to create or you want to copy is uh, installed so here basically workbench.cpp is uh, is where you create the um, the tool uh, the tool sets here these tool sets they are actually created here so if so you can add uh, like new uh, new tool you will uh, you will add it here so for instance if i copy paste uh, if i copy paste this and i put it twice then the software will just have twice this e icon here and uh, yeah basically that's what it, uh, this part is about and then you see that our create slot tool is a lot inside the, this command create geo.cpp so that's um, yeah that's so another let me go back here so this is again the sketcher um, folder and uh, we are inside the gui and inside the gui you have uh, like a command constraint which is like the different constraint uh, functions command create geo which are the create geometry tools uh, command sketcher tools it's uh, another set of tools which is uh, this uh, this one here on top on the top um, and uh, well you have different files depending on what you are looking for um, and also you have like the widgets here you see the task bar it has several widgets and those are those files task sketcher constraints uh, this is this widget you have three uh, you have three files cpp h are where the functions are in, uh, described ui is where the um, uh, interface is uh, uh, elements are declared so you see here you have the different elements uh, QV box uh, which inside which you have like this and you have different elements which are basically the um, uh, all the elements that you see here and into the CPP uh, code you have the, the structure of the code so yeah that's um, that's it and you also have the view provider uh, files which are basically so view provider sketch it's basically uh, the um, the f the, um, the main class of this whole uh, view so basically if you want something very uh, to declare a, a function uh, a variable that needs to be uh, 
across the whole uh, workbench. It will have to, to be done here. Um, right, so let's, let me give you a, a small view of a small uh, tour of the, uh, of the, uh, let me see, uh, not that still recording great the of the common create geometry um so what we can start to do is uh is closing everything because to to understand the code it's better so let's you can use control uh, the letter m and a and you see it will uh, close uh, everything so this way it's easier to understand the architecture of the code so up uh, let, let's go to the top, uh, you have the include file and uh, you see that basically you have, why is it not closed here, there you go, you have a section for each tool and so basically you have, it's the same for every tool, for every tool you have like a section, uh, so if you want to make a tool like is let, let's say you want to make the slot uh, arc slot tool again so you you can go to the slots you can check um, and find the create slot uh, section and then you can maybe copy paste you, you can copy this and you can uh, go to notepad notepad plus plus and just let's uh, create a new file here and you can replace for instance uh, um, you replace slot by uh, arc slot you make replace all and and there you you can like kind of use that as a as a start uh, for your own function so you can take that and maybe you, you can just paste it here and while it's absolutely not perfect and it won't work out of the box obviously it gives you like a start um, and you can try to understand how how um, how this is working uh, wait, 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 uh, yeah. right how, how this whole um, um, architecture is uh, is designed and how it works and you can try to start modifying it a little bit and uh, and until you get the feature that you want and that it's working and all uh, so that's yeah just to to, to explain you uh, how like if you want to create a new uh, a new tool uh, what you can how you can uh, you can do it um yeah so basically for each tool we can have a look uh, at one of them in more details let's take one that is fairly simple um, fairly simple yeah create line tool for instance let's have a look how it's uh, it's actually um, uh, architectured so basically you uh, when you have a tool here you see it's declared as uh, with this uh, macro which basically depending here on the letters that are used you will have different type of func uh, standard functions so here AU you have the activated and update action um, well yeah basically it's not so important so um, you can see to tell you the truth I'm, I don't even know what uh, what those are doing I know that update action just change the icon so if if you click the um, let's up, up there you see if you click this button you uh, the icon changes because it becomes like the construction version of the tool so basically this update action is just changing the icon uh, the activated uh, function is uh, so so basically this is the function which is launched when you click on the icon so you see here when you click the icon it will create this object that's basically what it does and this object is here and that's where every, the whole logic is uh, is done so yeah when it's activated it creates that object basically and uh, see here it's uh, like just some parameters uh, this is where you apply the shortcuts if you want any shortcuts for your function uh, this is um, 
just declaration of the names i think and this is the icon um yeah so that and you see the description of the tool so that's just like some parameters and here is the whole logic uh, happens so let's close all those tabs there you, there you go so this is a class um so for each tool here in the sketcher at least it's more or less the same you have as i said when it's activated it creates that class and which uh, which will create the, the lines. So basically you see uh, this is the declaration and you have a few things like an, enum an enumeration of, uh, so it's just like 0, 1, 2 and it's just to have names that are better than 0, 1, 2. So you see you have 6 first and 6 second and Basically, what the class is doing is that you 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 uh, go from uh, step to step. So you have the sick first step where you you can see here. I, actually, the sick first is when I move my my mouse here. Nothing is happening. Then I click and I go to the second mode, which is six second. And you see the the behavior is different. And I click again. And when I click, I go to the end mode, and and so the software knows to it needs to do something different. So, yeah, so that's about it. And you see, you have different functions in the class. You have also an activated function. So it's like what it's doing when it's um, uh, when the class is activated. So if yeah, you have mouse move, press button, and release button. So basically, that's. Uh, uh, what what what's uh, happening is all here which means that you see when i move my, my mouse you can see that there is a blue text and uh, that is moving along so for instance this blue text is actually uh, written here so if you if we click here mouse ma mo mouse move you see that you have here the if uh, that's like if it's the first step then you do this if we are currently in the second step of the tool then you do this uh, this code here so you see here uh, on the on the first step what it does is basically it just um, sets the position of the blue text uh, on on sketch position which is where my mouse is actually pointing so that's basically all it does and uh, well a few other things here but it's uh, we won't go into the details and here's six seconds let me just check obs again yeah it's still okay and you see when you are on this uh so when you are on the mouse move and you just uh, and you your mouse is moving all it does is create the blue text and then when you press the button something else will happen so here uh you see you have also statue so either you're in the first step or you're not in the first step so you're in the second step and here what it does is it does something else like when you click it register um, the first click as the like the first point of the line basically and uh, here it does some things which are related to this new tool uh, settings so you see you click and then you you actually register the click and you registered also the um, the release button which is when you release the click but you see release button doesn't have anything for the status seek first so it's not doing anything so we're just like here going to the uh, seek first and doing the code here and then what happens is that this code is triggered so it registers the button and then it goes it just go back to mouse move and what it does here actually is that it set the mode to six second so once you have clicked the button then it will just change to the mode six second so here now then when you move the mouse instead of doing this six first thing it will do this six second thing and here you see the six second thing is actually drawing a line uh, between your first point and your second point and then when you click again it will uh, 
uh, well, we can just check it out. You see, you click again, so it triggers not this one, but it triggers the else here, and it it say, okay, now we are at status end. So you can just like go to um, status end, and what happens in status end is that when you release the button, something happens. So basically, here uh, you you actually create the line with uh, this command. So this command will create the line, and uh, and and those commands will uh, like create um, constraints basically. And um, yeah, and then continuous mode will relaunch the tool. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much uh, pretty much it. It was just to explain you how one function uh, is working in the. Um, in the sketcher because between the different uh, between the different tools and workbenches i i think the different functions are working similarly um, yet with this kind of huge um, uh, open source project it's often that different parts of the code are completely different so it's it, it needs to be understood you need to focus to understand understand how it's made and how it works and so on so but yeah if you want to make a modification to a tool if you want to make a, a new feature uh, then you can probably you will have to to do something with uh, with with the this tool then if you want to make something more general it will more general to FreeCAD, it will probably not be in this uh, folder because this is the sketcher folder. And so in the source folder, you also have the main folder, which I think, which I don't know very well, to be completely honest. And you have the main GUI uh, folder in which you have a lot of uh, a lot of function, and you also have the view uh, the view provider, which is like the um, the main uh, view provider so that i think those function might be important but yeah so that that's that's it for for today it was just to give you like a broad uh, overview of um, of how you uh, of the, the architecture of the code and help you get started in where i had like <laughs> no one to help me so it was quite painful and um well, no one, it's not entirely true because there are a lot of um, of tutorials and so on and it's um, and you have a lot of information but just that to understand the structure of the code it's not so obvious and when you begin it's quite difficult to, to do. So another thing that is uh, that is interesting is that if you install git then you go to the source folder of uh, the root folder of the source um, folder uh, and you right click and you see if you install git you you have the option to open the bash here or if you or you can also use the git uh, uh, user interface and the git user interface it's quite nice and uh, currently um, and quite nice because it's uh, it's more visual than the um, than the bash tool and for the beginner it might be easier to understand so here you see you have different kind of tool you can create a new branch you can check out so check out is like changing of branches so you see now my current branch is the the task tool widget uh, branch, which is the one I showed you. And I have all other branches and I can change between the project uh, by here, by check, uh, changing uh, um, the branch. And once uh, I made some modification, the tool is working, for instance, I can uh, commit the change. So what you want to do, you see, you have here unstage changes. Uh, if you click on here, stage change, it will all go here and uh, and I didn't want to do that so you can undo unstage from commit here uh, and let me but let's say you want to, to push that to 
to your GitHub. So you, you finished your tool, you staged the changes, and then you click, uh, you enter your commit message explaining. So this is a new tool to make, uh, uh, to make something. And then you click commit, it will create the commit. So the changes will be registered as this commit. And then you click push and it will push the changes uh, to your uh, to your github so it will uh, register on github that you created the new uh, uh, commit and you, uh, that you made the new commit and and then once that's that's done you can post on uh, the forum and and say check out my uh, uh, have a look at my branch and my cool new feature and so on so yeah, that's pretty much it now. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope it, uh, you enjoyed it. So if you enjoyed it, I hope you'll, uh, you'll subscribe to this channel. I am not entirely sure if I will make a lot of video, but you know, it didn't took me so much uh, effort. So I, I thought it could help people out. Well, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.